umbrellas on your ceiling? Uh, I have a picture of umbrellas on my ceiling. Yeah, but it is a picture I did take um, outside of Anchorage, Alaska, where there's a moderate rainforest. And in the uh, entry building, they had those skylights and those umbrellas hanging upside down. And if I had a house full of skylights, that's what I would do. It's very Chihuly looking. All right, well, why don't we get started? Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned this in my emails, this, uh, this topic talk is going to focus on the State Library and the services that, that we can provide for you. So um, my name is Buzzy Nielsen. I am the Program Manager for Library Support and Development Services. Um, I am the most junior member, so I am probably not the person that you're gonna to wanna to ask questions to, but, um, but we're gonna talk a little bit about um, all of the, the great consultants and the programs that we do offer to, um, um, that you can take advantage of. So um, I'm gonna start off just by sharing my screen. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, the State Library's website as kind of a frame for talking about all the different services that we provide. So I'm gonna share my screen here real quickly. And um, hopefully uh, many of you have been here before, but um, this um, page that I'm showing you right now is the page for the State Library of Oregon. Um, so the State Library of Oregon actually has a few different divisions that do a lot of different things. Um, they serve state employees, um, talking books, which um, some of you may have taken advantage of or have patrons who take advantage of, um, run through the State Library. And then there is our division, Library Support and Development Services. We provide services to all of you as the libraries of Oregon. So um, if you want to get to the State Libraries page, it is pretty simple. It's just oregon.gov slash library. And if you want to get to uh, learn about the services that we provide at Library Support and Development Services, you'll see these four handy um, boxes here. You're just going to click on the one that says Oregon Libraries, and that's going to give you a rundown of all of the different services that we as library support and development provide for you. And we're going to talk about each of these sections, but um, many of you may avail yourself of the services that we provide, but a lot of you may actually um, avail yourself of the knowledge of our wonderful consultants that we have here. And we have a list of all of the consultants. If you, right, you can see right here at the top of the page, we have get help from a consultant and has all of our contact information. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stop sharing the screen briefly and um, introduce each of our consultants. So I'm just gonna go down my list here. So um, and if each of you just wants to unmute and say hi. So um, first up there is Darcy Hanning. She is our public library consultant and continuing education coordinator. Hi everyone. And there's uh, Arlene Weibel. She is our electronic services consultant. Hi, everyone. And then we have Jen Maurer. She's our school library consultant. Hello. And Greta Bergquist, our youth services consultant. Hi, folks. Uh, Ross Fuquay is our um, data and um, LSTA coordinator. Hi, that's me. And welcome, Patrick Bodley. I see you just logged on. And uh, Tamara Autumn is our um, grants and virtual reference coordinator. Hi, everyone. And then we have Farrah Wayand, who is our um, grant, our consulting assistant. Hi. <laughs> and if you are on that website and you um, call the general number or you email that general um, email, you're gonna get a hold of Farrell and Farrell can connect you with the right person who's, um, so you don't have to remember what each of us does. You can actually just, um, you can actually just um, email us generally or contact us generally and we will get you connected with the right person. So I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen here. I'm gonna go back right here. So um, we've roughly organized the different things that we do as library development support and development services into a few different categories, and um, each one of our, our one of our consultants is going to go through each of those areas. So we're going to start off with about libraries in Oregon, this one right here, and I'm going to turn it over to Ross to talk about that. 
Yeah, thanks, Buzzy. And thanks, everybody, for being here. It's great to see this turnout. And it's good to see some familiar faces and names and some new faces and names um, of folks I haven't gotten to meet yet in person. So um, anyway, thanks for joining us. But um, let's see, I think, Buzzy, are you going to keep driving through the website as we go through each page? Yeah. Um, yeah, so in this section, um, we have um, a resource on library laws of Oregon. Um, this is a libguide that Arlene um, is kind of the point person and she maintains this. Um, it's really kind of a compendium of basically all of the um, OAR, not OARs, sorry, Oregon um, statutes that, um, that have to do with libraries, public libraries, academics, library districts. Um, so that's a good place to start if you kind of are trying to figure out a, a question about your, your library. Um, the next one is library services, or sorry, library services in Oregon. And uh, this is a libguide I put together um, uh, a couple years back, <laughs> kind of selfishly for my own, um, uh, to help me understand um, public library service a little bit better in the state. It's, we have a weird state here. Um, with how the public um, has li public library services. And so there's, there's some information there on library districts. Um, there's a map on library service areas that is really just not for any kind of legal basis, but just for informational basis. And um, I'm gonna try to, try to keep that updated periodically. Um, the next uh, link down there is um, a page on our website about our, our LSTA program. And the Library Services and Technology Act is a piece of federal legislation that's been around since the 1950s in one form or another. And it provides um, a certain amount of funding. It's primarily based on population um, to each state and territory. Um, and that funding comes through the Federal um, Institute of Museum and Library Services. Um, and with, with those funds in Oregon, we do a lot of the work of library support and development um, is done with that federal funding. So um, that page kind of has, you know, kind of all of that kind of basic information. We also operate on a five-year plan. Um, for the LSCA program and that every five years we go through an evaluation process um, of our current program. We're gonna be ramping up that effort again here in the next year or so. And um, you can read about our current plan which goes through um, fiscal year 2022. So um, we'll be kind of evaluating our current plan and ramping up for the next five-year plan fairly soon. Um, the next one is a really handy libguide Darcy has put together on um, the minimum conditions for public libraries in Oregon. And so these are the minimum, minimum conditions, excuse me, that have been set by that, the passage of, that, of House Bill 2243, um, which um, just went into effect at the, at the start of this calendar year. So um, that has some good information on what those minimum conditions are. Um, the, the next one is the Oregon Intellectual Freedom Clearinghouse, um, which is, has, um, it's kind of a gathering place for um, whenever there's a, a materials challenge. Um, we actually um, kind of run this clearinghouse service. And I, when I say we, I mean Tamara. Um, Autumn is the point person for that. And um, so Tamara kind of gathers um, reports of challenged materials in, um, in a variety of libraries across Oregon. And then um, there's an annual report every year, which um, goes to the ALA, I believe. Um, and then uh, below that, we have the Oregon Library Directory. Um, Farrell is kind of our point person for all things library directory, but um, uh, it's just kind of a handy place to, to search and find, um, 
you know, mailing address information, that kind of thing for not just public and academic libraries, but also for um, uh, volunteer and tribal and special libraries in our state. And then the last uh, link on this page will um, take you to um, uh, one of my areas is the public library statistics. And if you are a public library director, as some of you on this call are, or, or if you work in a public library, you are probably well aware of the, the annual statistical coal report for public libraries. So um, you can find kind of the last several years of of data um, through this page, and and then it that page will actually get you to our LibGuide for um, how to complete the report as well. All right, great, thanks, Ross. Um, I should say if you have any questions, we're going to go through these things fairly quickly. If you have any questions about them, we are going to have some time at the end. And I do see um, Jackie, you you asked, you know, to came across a really old trustees manual. Um, that um, I think that we put together quite a few years ago, if I remember correctly. Um, I don't believe that we um, we have a ton of other things right now for trustees and boards, but I'll, I'll throw it to the rest of the consultants um, since I'm I am new. Uh, this is Darcy. We do have um, we have or we are paying for access to the United for Libraries. Um, trustee resources uh, online training for board members and I'll talk a little bit about that um, when my turn comes up. Perfect. Thanks Darcy. Sorry about that. Totally spaced that. Okay, a lot to learn as you will find out. Okay, so um, on our website here, um, what I'm gonna do is um, when you're on our website, you can navigate to the different sections here on the left. So I'm gonna skip over to grants and aids for libraries, which, um, whoops which Tamara is going to talk about. Yeah, so um, we have several different uh, grants and aid opportunities. Um, so the first is the LSTA grant. So this is funded with our LSTA um, federal funding, which Ross talked briefly about. And the perhaps the well known, most well-known Grant program out of that is the competitive grant program. And this is an annual program where um, an all academic school, special tribal and legally established public libraries, as well as nonprofit organizations that partner with libraries are eligible to apply for. Um, and the types of projects that we fund are um, vary a lot. They have to line up with one of the goals in our five year LSTA plan. Uh, we typically fund between 10 and 15 projects each year. Um, but that number is based on the amounts um, that come in from the project applications. Um, and we will be opening the application process for those in November. So be on the lookout. We generally advertise it through Lives or and a variety of other, of other um, listservs, but it also be on the website. And so you can find information there. We also offer some other um, grant opportunities from LSTA grants. Um, last year we did a newspaper digitization grant where we partnered with the University of Oregon um, to have libraries get funding to have their local newspapers digitized and added to the uh, U of O Libraries Historic Oregon Newspapers Database. Right now we have a CARES Act grant going on, which is non-competitive subgrants to 55 public tribal and community college libraries in Oregon and these were based on priorities identified by the IMLS. So you'll see different opportunities appear. Um, again, we advertise those on the listserv, we advertise those on the website, they'll be out on our social media accounts. Um, at any point, if you ever have questions about grants, what's going on, am I eligible, I have a project, but I'm not sure, blah, blah, blah. Just reach out to us. That's what we're here for is to answer your questions and give you guidance. Even if we can't be the one, you know, maybe your project doesn't fit one of our grants, we can help you um, explore other grant opportunities out there. So that's the LSTA grants program. Um, the other big, big grants program we have is the Ready to Read grants, which I'm sure lots of you are familiar with. This is a state funded, non-competitive grant. Um, and it's used to fund early literacy services and summer reading programs. It's again, an annual grant program. Um, all legally established public libraries are eligible. They must apply and report on their yearly grant spending and all questions about this, of course, go to our youth services consultant, which is Greta. 
Um, and that's the Ready to Read program. And then we have a couple of other things that aren't grants, but they're just um, some financial aid. So we subscribe to Lyricis. And what this does for you is if you go to that link that Buzzy's showing, you can get discounts on classes, on training. You can get free participation in some events and webinars. You can get some savings on supplies and products. And you can also post jobs to their job bank. So if you're looking to do like a national search for somebody, that's a good place you can post jobs. Um, and the last thing that we um, participate in is the E-rate program. So this is a federal program um, where eligible schools and libraries in the US can get discounts to help obtain affordable telecommunications and internet access. Um, we can help, it's not administered by us, it's administered by the Universal Service Administrative Company, the USAC. Um, we can answer basic questions though about it and if you have more complicated questions about it, we can point you to the resources and the consultants that you need to talk to in order to get your questions answered. So this is a really valuable program and we encourage you to take um, advantage of it. And that's all I have to share about our grants and aid. Great, thanks Tamara. Uh, so the next section we have is about the resources and so the other resources and services that we offer for libraries and I'm going to turn it over to Darcy. Hi everyone. So first up I'll talk about continuing education. Uh, this will bring you to a page with a brief overview of some of the free CE resources we have. Uh, the full list of resources is actually available on our CE Lib Guide, which is linked to from this page. Um, but on this page, you will find a link to the staff training tutorials that are hosted on Niche Academy, a link to Ryan Dowd's online tutorial, as well as access to his live and recorded webinars, which cover how to negotiate various customer interactions. On this page, you'll also find some information on how to make use of those discounts for lyricists that was just talked about. Uh, how to sign up for the weekly Tech Talk newsletter and how to access the trustee resources for library board members. Um, we also host email discussion announcements lists. We have a couple of different kinds. Um, we have open discussion lists for topics of general interest to the library community, such as Libs or, as well as some specific topics such as intellectual freedom, children and young adult services, and the digital projects uh, collaborations in the Northwest. We also host a number of announcement only lists. Um, these are so that library support staff can send communications to explicit audiences such as directors or ready to read grant folks, as well as closed lists for some groups um, so that they can have focused discussions on specific topics. And hey, we have a library and information science collection. Um, this collection uh, contains library science materials that Oregon library staff may borrow in support of their work in professional learning. Uh, this collection is funded by the Institute Museum of Library and Services through the LSTA uh, funding that we receive. Um, all these items may be borrowed through your library's interlibrary loan process. If you don't have access to ILL or you're not currently affiliated with a library, still contact us. We can make arrangements to get you those materials. And we already talked about the Oregon Intellectual Freedom Clearinghouse. We've got that in a couple places just to make sure that it makes sense. Um, we have some resource guides. But we've also referred to these as lib guides. Currently, we have 15 topic specific guides. And actually, Buzzy, on this one, could you click through just so people can kind of get a sense of what's there? Um, this includes uh, the Census 2020 information we've been providing to folks. Uh, COVID-19 is a really great lib guide with all kinds of resources. This is where you'll find the full-fledged continuing education information as well as uh, information about Ready to Read grant, the LSTA grant program, public library statistical report that Ross mentioned, and also some information on the statewide database licensing program. Basically, this is where we host most of the gory details of the services and programs and resources we offer to all of you. So thanks, Buzzy. We have uh, school library services. This is uh, headed up by Jen Maurer. Um, this is a great place to go for school library topics. Uh, right now we've got information there on school library opening plans, copyright guidelines during COVID-19. Uh, we have the Oregon Association of School Libraries publications on the roles of classified school library staff as well as teacher librarians during the uh, COVID-19. 
And then there are, of course, some ongoing resources for OSLIS, which is the K-12 portal on information literacy and statewide databases. Jen Maurer also provides um, all the consulting assistance you need around school library staff and on topics, uh, school library topics, so be sure to contact her as you need to. And then last but not least, we have our youth services section. And this is where you can find different resources for professional development for those who are serving children and young adults, as well as information on the Oregon Reader's Choice Awards and Oregon Battle of the Books programs and information on summer reading and ready to read grants. Uh, you can also find some uh, additional information for serving children and young adults on our COVID-19 LID guide under the Youth Services tab. And of course, Greta is available to uh, assist you as you need. Thanks. All right, thanks, Darcy. And uh, to talk about our statewide programs and initiatives, uh, it is, we're gonna have Arlene tell us about those. Uh, thanks, Bezzy. So um, as you'll notice, as we go through this list, um, there are definitely situations where we have double listed our different um, different uh, services and resources, mostly because, you know, what the difference between a resource and a service is kind of a, a moot point. So we just wanted to um, make sure that, you know, we tried to gather uh, things in similar buckets, but we, you know, we also want to make sure that we are um, providing as quick of a links into information as possible. So, so some of the um, things that are on this list that you've seen before, but um, I wanted to just go over them quickly, um, some of the, the other kinds of services that we provide. But one of the big ones is AnswerLand, which is our virtual reference service. And again, that's coordinated by Tamara. And um, basically, it, it, there's a, a number of different ways you can access um, that particular service. You can point users directly to AnswerLand for their, you know, to answer reference questions. You can also partner with, um, with us to um, uh, get access to the service and then also gain access to your own instance of the software that is used in Ancelin for chat reference if you want to manage those services at your library level. And then one of the uh, great new features of Answerland that we've implemented just in the last six months or so is a um, Spanish language version of Answerland. So not only um, do we have interfaces that are in Spanish to the virtual reference, but we have um, staffing of um, of chat service by uh, native Spanish speakers. So if you haven't had a chance to promote that in your community, that would be a great thing to take a look at um, as a new service. Uh, next is the EDGE initiative. And this is a, um, a program that um, is uh, offered to help libraries assess um, where they are in meeting the technology uh, needs of their communities. And it's a real good assessment tool to kind of uh, see where you are against other, it's like a benchmarking thing where you are against other libraries in various categories. So uh, Darcy heads up um, the coordination or coordinates that program and that has had some changes in it in the last year, but if you have any questions about that, definitely direct your questions to Darcy. The next two on the list are um, ways that we um, like to access the statewide databases. The first one is Libraries of Oregon, and this is a portal into um, our state databases that doesn't require um, to you to be affiliated with a specific library. So, um, so it's a way to get into um, both the Gale database resources and the Learning Express library resources, plus some other resources, free resources that we have available um, out there. It's a it's a great way, place to point someone if you're not if you're answering a question and you're not really sure they're in your library jurisdiction, or if you're working in an academic library and you want to get them to a specific resource um, that's typically um, made available through public libraries, it's a great site to point people to. It also has directory information about libraries, so it gives you a way to look up where public libraries are, are located throughout the state. And then similarly, the um, school 
uh, we call it OSLIS by, by its acronym, but the School Library Information System is um, a way to um, access those online resources that we license for um, the state, but we put, but it is put into an information literacy framework that really tries to organize access to those resources by the level of the student, whether it be elementary or secondary student, and then also gives them a context for how to do research. And there are a lot of great um, uh, tutorials and, um, and guidance on how to just go through the basic research process for students at that K-12 level. And um, I really, would encourage you who maybe work with people who are struggling with supporting online schooling right now. Um, if, if, if you're working with patrons or you're even in your own life, if you're trying to support um, students, this is a good resource to um, help get them to um, things that are not just based on what a school district has, but is av are available to all students across, across the state. Um, and then finally, both of those access points, Libraries of Oregon and, and OSLIS, are a way to access the resources that we license through the statewide database licensing program. And again, we offer um, all libraries in the state access to um, the, a, a suite of Gale databases as well as Learning Express Library. Um, this link on our website will take you to information about that program if your library isn't already signed up for the program, how to get signed up. It also um, gives updates on things that are going on with those resources. And then another thing we do, we have an advisory committee that works with us to um, to um, give us feedback about what resources are in the program and um, helps us, you know, design our websites and that kind of thing to make things accessible. The statewide database um, licensing advisory committee. So this is a way to get into the list of people who are on that committee. We have representatives from academic, public, school libraries. So if you're wanting to give the state library feedback about the resources we make available, working with your representative for your constituency on the advisory committee is a great way to do that. Of course, we always welcome direct feedback, but um, letting you know your needs known to your representative on the advisory committee is also a great way to, to provide that level of feedback. And then we also have just pulled together um, some of the information that the State Library collects around summer reading uh, here under this tab. And this is things like the results of the um, annual report that we ask libraries to do around summer reading and some of the other resources that are available to libraries for summer reading programs. And those are gathered there. <clears throat> All right, so that's kind of a whirlwind tour of everything that we have to offer. And of course, we do not expect you to remember it all or to remember who's in charge of what. You know, if you contact almost any one of us in library support, we can connect you with, with the right person or, um, or find out ways, um, find out some other ways to help um, solve your issues. Um, I do want to call attention to um, a couple of other things. Um, so, um, we are currently, the, the entire state library, we have um, recently adopted a new strategic plan. If you go under about us and missions and strategic plan, you can see that. It is a, a cool 27 initiatives in our strategic plan. And um, some, they apply to all the different parts of the state library, but there are several of them that, that apply to us too. So we are, we're really focusing on several different things right now. Our priorities are where um, Arlene, you might have been hearing from Arlene talking to you about your um, offerings and what you need in terms of um, workforce development for your, for your patrons. Um, you also um, might be hearing from Darcy and Tamara about um, new education needs. Um, this plan is going to kind of go go through the next three years and so it's really um, it's built not just off of you know what what we thought but also we talked to you to see what you wanted us to focus on. So it also has a number of initiatives um, both internally and externally focused about equity, diversity, inclusion as well. So if you're interested that is worth checking out too. Um, 
And again, um, just as a reminder, um, you can contact us if you just click that get help from a consultant link, you can see everything that we, um, you can see all of our contact information It kind of lists the different things that we, we do. Um, and with that, um, before I open it to questions, I just wanted to see, um, do any of the other um, staff, do any of you have anything you'd like to add before we open it up for questions? All right. In that case, I'm gonna um, just open it up and ask um, if anybody has any questions about um, any of the services we provide or, or just anything in general. Jackie? I, um, I think you left out a really important piece that I don't know about everybody else, but I found really helpful is the COVID-19 information link that um, I was kind of living on this last two months. And I just want to thank you for all that information. Yeah, so um, a, lot of, a lot of the staff worked on that and Arlene did a, a lot of work on that. And of course, given this is an ongoing issue, um, we actually have that link right from our front page. So, um, and if you have any resources you think would be helpful to put on here, please let us know too. This is um, constantly getting updated. So thank you for mentioning that, Jackie. All right, any other questions? Or things you'd like us to, to go into a bit more detail on? I got a quick one, Buzzy. Yeah. Um, I think it was Arlene, and if it wasn't, I'm sorry, I uh, mentioned that there's kind of like dual links to different places to get us in the right place. Um, am I correct in assuming that the LSTA links in the about libraries in Oregon and the LST links in the grants and age page, grants and aid page go to the same place? Yes. Yeah. Okay. They yeah, they'll direct you to the same place. Thank you. Um, and, and actually, thank you for mentioning that, because one of the other things that I wanted to mention, actually Arlene um, implied it. Arlene mentioned that we have a committee that helps pick out the statewide databases. We actually have a few committees and councils that help guide the work that we do. Um, so in addition to the statewide database um, licensing committee, we also have, um, Jen works with the group that helps her with OSLIS. Tamara works with the group that helps with Answerland. We also have the Library Service and Technology Act Advisory Council, which kind of oversees basically most of what we do as a division. Um, and you will occasionally see us asking for volunteers for those. Actually, we're currently looking for people to serve on the LST Advisory Council um, to help um, give us some strategic direction and also to help review competitive grants. Really great opportunity to, to get more involved and to learn a little bit more about what we do and to help out all the different libraries in the state. I wanna give yeah. a shout out Patrick, um, he was part of a great um, session this morning for our souls, so. And we're glad you're in Oregon instead of Idaho. Me too. Thanks for having me. All right. Hey, Anybody else? Yeah, I was just curious about Lyricis. Is it, is it, have you guys had that for a while or is it kind of new? This is Darcy and I can answer that question. We've had it for quite a few years. It's just one of those things that's hard for us to promote um, because sometimes the suppliers list will change from year to year. Um, and um, over the years, Lyricist has gone through some transformation around the continuing education um, opportunities that they provide. A lot of their free things are for their services. So it feels a little awkward to always be promoting their, their free webinars. Um, but they do have some good courses and some um, interesting webinars that you can get a discount for through that, uh, through our membership. And that's for the patrons, not necessarily the library staff? It's for library staff, not patrons. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Buzzy, I wanted to jump in. Um, Jackie had asked in the chat if it was okay to put links to Answerland and OSLIS on your library websites. Please do. <laughs> Answerland, OSLIS, Libraries of Oregon, these are all things that we want to get out to patrons and we want your involvement. So um, we have 
at least Angela and Anasos, we have some promotional materials. If you want like pencils and things like that, you can contact us and get that. But yes, get the word out <laughs> to the patrons. We provide these services so that you guys can provide them. And you can also put in um, custom links to access the statewide resources on your sites as well. Um, Arlene is the person to talk to about those. The advantage of doing that is it'll allow you to track kind of what your patrons are using and figure out what, what, is, um, what they're accessing through the statewide resources. Anyone else have questions or something you want us to talk a bit more about? Just some comments? All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time. Before we sign off, let's just um, real quick, I'd like to share that um, we're going to continue hosting these kinds of topic talks once a month. And next month, we hope to have a presentation on how to do virtual programming. And I believe Breda's working on that. The following month, Buzzy's going to talk about the cool and interesting things libraries have come up with during this time of COVID. And then in December, we will have a presentation on a grant, uh, finding grants and, put, and maybe a little bit of information about writing grants. So stay tuned for those. We'll have some dates for those soon. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of you. And if you have suggestions for future topics, we would love to hear them too. All right, well, again, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time. Um, if you have any questions, you are always welcome to contact us. And uh, yeah, thanks. I hope you all have a good afternoon. And if anybody has a question and you want to stay and ask it, um, we can stay on a few minutes if that's helpful. Thanks, Greta. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And I'll stop recording now in case anybody <laughs> does not want their questions recorded for posterity. Uh -huh.